Hello, and welcome to Match Fishing TV. In this week's episode, we'll be looking at the Bait Tech White Acres Festival from last week, Fishermania qualifier at Messingham Sands, Maver Match this qualifier from Heronbrook, and we'll be looking at the second of the Drennan Knockout Cup qualifiers from Lindo. I'm joined in the studio by Tom Scully. Hello. And Matt Godfrey. Hey up. So straight into the action, Tom. Mm. Um, our mate Richard Chave's done well on the Kent and Avon Canal. I know, I know. It just goes to show, Roger, that even a blind squirrel finds a nut sometimes, <laughs> doesn't it? Eh? <clears throat> I loved what he put on Facebook on Sunday night. I thought it was one of the funniest things I've seen in ages. He said, we're really pleased to have done well on the Kent and Avon Canal this weekend. And um, A big match, 90 pegs, wasn't it? Yeah, 90 yeah. pegger, 90 pegger. Um, won the match with, I think he had 16 pound of skimmers. He caught on Chopworm and Caster. Um, and Maggot and Castro over ground bait as well on a different line, I think, from what he said. But he put, um, you know, delighted to have won the match. Obviously, it was a team match. So I bought all my teammates a beer and 12 straws. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he, he's a terrific guy, Richard. I mean, he's been around forever. Long-time friend of, of pole fishing and match fishing magazines. Obviously, does the regular diary. Yeah, he writes fishing. me a lovely column every month. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the first thing I turn to when, when I'm going through the magazine. It's, um, you know, and it's proper fishing, as I keep calling it. Definitely, definitely. I mean, it was interesting. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago, the first round of this um, Spring League. And the weights were quite low. I think eight pounds best that day. Yeah. Um, yeah. If I remember rightly. And, you know, this week it's really switched on. Uh, Richard's had 16 pound three. Again, he's caught some skimmers. Second place, Simon Keffer. He's had 10 pound three of skimmers again on Chopworm. And eight pound 15 was third. So, you know, that warm weather, it's really sort of started to kick things into life, I think. It was a beautiful weekend as well, wasn't it? I mean, Absolutely. It was, it was a, the brilliant weekend to be out fishing. Definitely. Um, not too. It went a bit chilly yesterday afternoon, but... Yeah. No, it's... Um, yeah. So how's that, uh, how's that shaping up league-wise, do you know? Um, well, it was interesting, again, when we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, we mentioned how well John and Borden had done, and now they've got some great young anglers starting to really do well. And they actually won the league again on the day. They've now extended the lead um, in the league. Um, I think they've got 152 points, and Thatcher's are actually second with 138. So, you know, Borden, again, surging ahead, really. Excellent. A bit like Leicester City. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, uh, first round of the Feeder Masters, the New Press and Innovations Feeder Masters yes, in Boston. Yes, it, it was. There were a lot of buzz about this event on uh, Facebook. It's a new event, Rog. There's 20 60-peg qualifiers, um, and there's three anglers from each one um, go through to a final. That's like an angler from each 20-peg section. Uh, the first one were at Barston Lakes on Sunday, and... It was won by Eddie Bryden. It's a good job we didn't get an interview with him because we'd have needed subtitles from where he's from. He's uh, <laughs> right up north. I think he's like even norther than James Denton. Or even norther? Yeah. yeah. Oh, excellent. Lives in Durham. I yeah, think. yeah. Durham area. Uh, but he had a good weight. He had 87 pound and Boston's been fishing quite difficult. So that were a brilliant weight on the day. But interestingly, he had a really close next peg battle with um, England feeder international, Steve Ringer. Um, Steve was second with 81 pounds on peg. I think Eddie was on peg uh, 14. I, don't know, I think Steve was on 13. And mm. interestingly, you're both chucking just towards the back of the 18th tee there. Yeah. Um, they both caught on long range feeder tactics. But one little thing that I spoke to Eddie about is, as the match went on, it got a little bit windier and he was struggling to hit where he was casting with his feeder. And he needed something a little bit heavier, but he hadn't got any more feeders with him. So he actually taped an ounce and a half bomb onto the back of his feeder just to help him get to where uh, he were casting. Brilliant. And of course, in a, in a peg to peg battle like that, I'm assuming they were both in the same section, so Eddie goes through, Steve's going to miss out. Yeah, that's it. Steve's, Steve's got to have a go again. Yeah. yeah. So Come second in the match, but not in the final. Yeah, the qualifiers on the day were actually Eddie Bryden from peg 14, John O'Driscoll uh, from peg 47, and Andrew Jupp from peg 123. Excellent. So. And the final is at Bow Beach, obviously, quite a bit later in the season. Yeah, somewhere I've never been, Bow Beach. Oh, I don't gorgeous. really know much about it. But... Lovely place. Yeah, it's. Um, I don't know whether you can call reservoirs natural venues, but yeah, yeah. You know, it is picturesque, as they, as they mm. say in Leicester. I, I quite like it though this event because it, you say it's feeder fishing. Like this qualifier has been on a commercial, so there's been a lot of method feeder, but there's some on the tidal trend and some on natural venues, some on commercials, and there's not really any rules. Like pretty much, you can use a feeder, yeah. and there's not really so there's any no rules. Tail, no like... tail length rules, no. Or no method, or they say venue rules apply. That, okay, that, that, which is fair enough. Yeah. And also, I think the thing I like about it, it's actually got an international flavour. This event, there's qualifiers in Holland, there's qualifiers yeah. in Ireland, okay. so it's a proper. You know, I think the final will be a 
a really, really good um, good event. And Bar Beach, you know, I went there, I was lucky enough to go there once on a feature. There's a lot of roaching there, there's bream, there's skimmers, and, and talking to the people who fish it a lot, could be any number of methods. You know, even though it's feeder fishing, it could be long range for bream, it could be sort of short feeder fishing for roach. So it will be a really, really interesting find. It's, I mean, it sounds to me as though Preston Innovations have been really pushing the buttons on this one, because if you've got continental qualifiers as well, mm. um, obviously they're huge on the continent now, and, and we know how good the Dutch, for instance, or, um, are at feeder fishing. It should be a really, really interesting series. I yeah, think it will be. Well done, Press Innovations. Well done, Eddie. Uh, Maven match this qualifier at Heronbrook. Yeah, again, looking at the results, absolutely fantastic match. Um, fished really, really well. John Ashwell won it. Uh, he's a brilliant local angler. He actually won the festival there. Was it, was it last year? Or yeah, last year. He won, yeah. yeah. Um, great local angler. He weighed 163 pound, eight ounce. He's drawn peg 26 on Meadow, which is a form peg. It's on a bit of a bend, um, but you know he's done absolutely brilliant. And there's been a couple of younger anglers who've been sort of biting at his heels. Frankie Gainacelli's come third. He's at 142 six. Second, he won. Up second, third. Sorry, second. Sorry, I won't like me saying that, will he? <laughs> Ivan, Ivan Mark used to say nobody ever remembers who came second, and you obviously didn't. <laughs> no, especially not with me and Frankie. <laughs> no, we like Frankie. But um, some discussion about the peg in there? Yeah, you always get a few whinges, Roger. There was a few whinges on social media, weren't there, that we sort of picked up on about, oh, it was pegged really tightly in some areas, and other people have had loads of room. I actually weighed this same qualifier in last year, because I remember driving back from Whiteacres to fish it, yeah. and uh, the venue owner, Neil, asked me to help weigh in on Meadowpool, and I weighed in the winner, Kerry Kirkwood, and he had a peg in either side of him. I can remember, I can remember going to weigh where I was thinking, oh, he's won the court a lot here, and he won the match. Mm. So, knowing her own book as I do, yeah. yes, you know, it's been a... The, the, Peg that's one, it's if you look at the pegging peg. on paper, it's going to, it might look unusual, but yeah. it's pegged to best effect. You think? Yeah, I'm not trying to say it's fair, because I don't think that the venue is fair. I don't think you can make something fair that is naturally not fair. Peg 26 on Meadow has won a lot of yeah. matches this year. But what can you say? I've got to be honest, I've not been on many 100-plus peg matches that aren't pegging. I think whether it's on a no. natural water, a commercial, yeah. they're always going to be good pegs and bad yeah. pegs. And you look at the weights, 163 pound, 142, 120. 113, 111, 98, it's close. Brilliant, isn't it? Great match. Yeah, it's, um, again, not my cup of tea, but, but well done to uh, well done to the winner. He's through to the Maven match this final. Mm. So how many is that through now? Half a dozen? Uh, it's got to be about that, hasn't it? Yeah. It's shaped up to be a, a good battle anyway. There's some, some top anglers gone through, so yeah. Excellent. Fishermania qualified this week as well, Messingham Sands. Yeah, 130 pegger at Messingham. Um, a lot of people were looking forward to this one. It's an interesting venue, some really big fish, lots of different lakes, and you never really know where the winner's going to come from um, at Messingham. This time it came in the way of Les Marshall. We know little Les, don't we? He's awesome, isn't he? Right, He's character. Awesome. He had £151.12, um, a cracking weight. He's a local lad from, well, he's from Barnsley, but he fishes all around yeah. Doncaster. Does really well Sassy at Lindo. Circuit, yeah. yeah, you've got a right little following. He's a right cheeky little chap he is. Proper yeah. D-Dardu accent and hands a load of banter out all the time. So yeah. he'll, I'm sure he'll be great entertainment in the final on them cameras He'll be stuff. brilliant. His yeah. favourite saying is, I'm only a club angler. He must have said that, I was only him once, he must have said that three times. And I said, well, you mean if Alan Scothorn or Will Raisin join a club, are they a club angler as well? <laughs> I'm but only it, a club angler. I've got, I've got to pull you up on something there, Matt, because you just said it'd be great on the cameras. Of course, there's no guarantee he's going to be on the cameras. That's but, true, yeah. We're, yeah. we're now this semi-final um, format. He's so, through to the semi-final, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's not straight into the final, so he'll fish. I think, is it a That's going to catch a lot of people out. You're yeah, now looking yeah. for two big draws to, to get on those cameras. 32 peg semi and then into the 16 peg final. Um, but second place was another local angler, Steve Rothery. He had £123, and third place again a local, which shows that, you know, it's probably been quite a fair match. Um, hmm. People Lo who live close yeah. by and fish. Local fish information's there a lot. Yeah. come to the fore, yeah. Mark Rogers, uh, £117. So, again, big weights, though. Good yeah. fishing. It's, it's, I mean, it's been a, a great weekend for turnouts, you know, listening to the, the 90s, the 100s, the 130s that we've been seeing. Um, and they're not all big money qualifiers. Um, you know, there are an awful lot of people that are catching an awful lot of yeah, fish at the minute, yeah. which, is, which is excellent. Uh, Tom, we, you obviously weren't in the office last week. You no. were down in 
Sunny Cornwall. It was lovely. The weather were nice, the fishing were fantastic. It's fished ever so well last week, why take it? You know. This is the Bait Tech Festival. Yeah, the Bait Tech Festival. Um, the format is obviously you have a couple of days practicing Saturday and Sunday. Um, I, like I tend to do, use my job to my advantage and shot a couple of features with a couple of good anglers <laughs> on, the, on the lakes I'm going to be fishing. So always nice, shot a couple of lovely features for the magazine. And then the festival starts on Monday and goes through to, to Friday. You, you basically fish a different rotation every day, different lake every day. Um, man of the moment, um, Andy Geldart, he won the Park Dean Festival, uh, Park Dean Final, should I say, the 25 Grand Final last October. His first visit back down to Whiteacres and he's gone and, and won the festival. Um, done absolutely brilliantly. Um, it's been close, it always is down there because yeah. obviously you can drop your worst result. You might have people who aren't actually in the top 30 because they might be dropping a last, but we can actually win the festival, it does yeah, happen. Still come back. You know, so uh, Nick Speed was up there, Callum Dix was up there, Andy Gold that was up there. We really were vying for, yeah, yeah. Um, for that top spot, but it was Andy who, uh, who went on and did it, and I managed to get a nice little interview with him as well. Yeah, we'll, we'll go to the, we'll, we'll have a look at the interview just before the break. I mean, one of the things, uh, there's, there's two things that caught my eye. The, the first one is that you obviously didn't do any laundry last week because you've got a very old polo shirt on tonight. So <laughs> yeah. you've used all your clothes on holiday and, and come in that for today's filming definitely but the second thing you were talking about the attendance at the um at the festival mm. uh used to be 150 pegs sell out without fail 180. every 180 pegs sell out mm. without, without fail every year um and you think we're starting to see the influence of the irish festival circuit i'm not quite sure what it is um Rog, what i do know is the fishing at wire takers from what i've seen these last two years has never been better you know mm. so it, it's not the fishing that's stopping people from going um but yes there has been a slight decline in the, in the numbers. You know, there's 100, and, I think there was 132 there last week. Um, there's a few less than normal this week on the Guru Festival as well. Um, yeah, you know, I was sort of saying earlier, the, the amount of choice that match anglers have got now, different events to fish, you know, there's the resurgence of the Irish events, there's new events like the Feeder Masters that we've just talked about, uh, River Fest's obviously booming in popularity, as well as a lot of local little festivals, the venues like Heronbrook. Um, you know, that we've talked about and, and other places as well. Yeah, there's yeah. so much choice that I think all that's happening here yeah. is inevitably it's diluting. There was a time, I guess, when, when white takers at this time of year was pretty much the only thing in the calendar. Yeah. Um, now, with Fishermania, Maver Match This, the new Preston Innovations Feeder event, um, everything, and R River Masters as well, when, when, you know, when that kicks off, everything is gearing towards mm. a big money final. Yeah. And so that can be an alternative to fishing a traditional festival. I also think um, that Cornwall was great for the festival circuit because it, 20 years ago, it was what we didn't do in the rest of England. Yeah. Mm. Now, carp fishing, effectively, is what we do do in the rest of England. And so people want a bit of a change. That's why the Irish circuit's coming to start to make a comeback. Definitely. And something else that struck me down there, you know, another big thing at White Acres, and it's actually a positive for me, but it might not be for a lot of people, the standard is ridiculously high. You know, to do well in them festivals, yeah. it's the same old faces, because they are, yeah. quite frankly, quite a long way in front of everybody else at that style of fishing. <clears throat> Paul Holland, you know, he was up there again, brilliant angler, does ever so I went next to him one day, and uh, I just sat there, and I'm as competitive as anybody, but he was just so in tune with it, you know, he's yeah, obviously been yeah. doing a lot of that kind of, I'm thinking, and work cut out to, to beat this guy today, and, and he'd be, he'd be bad. You know? I, I think a lot of it, these low attendances, I think money might be something to do with it at Whitetakers, because these events that you've just talked about, Riverfest, 10,000 quid, Match This, 60,000 quid, Fishermania, 30,000 quid, Feeder Masters is a big payout. Um, Whitetakers Festivals, you're only talking, what did Andy get for winning, 1,600 quid? True, but I would say, and we've talked about this, you know, our best chance of getting in a big money final is yeah, to A, yeah. qualify for, and then get in the top 24 of the Preston Innovations Festival and fish for 25 grand. Because there's 24 people qualify from one festival for that. And you've got through to that, haven't you? I'm through to the Preston Festival. The top 50 in each yeah. festival qualify for that, so I, and I'll go down and fish. Matt qualifies automatically because the top 24 who fished the previous year yeah. get an invite for the next year. So, you know, I think that for... How can I say it? Um, somebody who wants to give themselves the best possible chance, who fancies the chances of uh, fishing at that yeah, kind of fishing, yeah. that's the easiest and best way to qualify for a big money final. Okay, so let's see what Andy had to say. Well done, Andy. And um, then we'll go to the break. Well, I'm here with my very, very good friend and also the 2016 Bait Tech Festival champion, 
Andy Gelder. Andy, what a week. Well done again. I mean, down here, you just seem to keep winning. Yeah, it's, um, it's been a lovely week, mate. Absolutely brilliant. The fishing has been better than I've ever known it down here. It's just getting stronger and stronger again every year as this place. I can't tell you how happy I am, obviously, for you to win this. Ah, oh, no, thank you, mate. And, uh, obviously, after the part, Dean, final you won last year, 25 grand. Yeah. Yeah, you come back, it's, your first, here, yeah. it's your first visit back, isn't it? Yeah. And that's yeah. another three grand. So you've took 28 grand off part you know, or white acres in the last yeah, two uh, visits. It's um, it's just nice, isn't it? it it's, it's really nice because I said to you earlier, I, I, I've took a bit of time out. You know, I've had a kid and, and with my wife and stuff, and I, I, I love, love to spend time with him. And, and, and you feel like you're behind a bit on the likes of Andy Power and mm. yourself and Matt Godfrey. You know, you, you're fishing quite a lot, aren't you, and, and stuff like that. And, and it, it's nice to actually come down and catch some fish and then have that result at end of the week because it, you know, it still makes you feel like that you've got some at Well, I've got to prove. say, mate, yeah, I know exactly what you mean, but I mean, your results at Whiteacres over the last 10 years, never mind the last year. There can't be many who's, who's as consistently in the frame when you come, you know. You, you rarely, when you come, it's very rare you don't frame, isn't it, to be fair? Yeah, I must, I, I've had I've had a good good run, I've had a good run over the years, um, and yeah, I, I can't complain about that, it, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And long may it continue, mate, so very well, well done again. Thank you, Thomas. Welcome back. Great event on at the moment. Uh, just out of the weekend, Matt, the Fishing with the Stars event, which is run by Pole Fishing and Match Fishing magazines, which gives readers a chance to fish with the stars. Certainly does. We've got six stars together, Rog, this year, um, and it took place at Lindome Lakes. We've actually got two of these days. There's another one coming up um, on the 14th of May at Tunnel Barn Farm, uh, but it was the northern one on Saturday. It went down an absolute tree. Uh, we had some great stars on offer. Bob Nudd, he demonstrated some short pole, chop worm and caster tactics, uh, told a few stories. Uh, tell you what, he didn't hardly do any fishing, Bob. He had everyone else sat on the box doing it. That's all right, so everybody got a chance it. to fish with Bob's kit. Oh, yeah, everybody. Um, Grant Albert were there. He demonstrated a long pole attack, loose feeding pellets, um, showed people how to catch some fish on the bottom to start with and then catch shallow later on. Andy Kinder were there, the biggest man in angling. Um, <laughs> But he were, he were great, Andy, were he? You know what he's like. He were giving him plenty he, of He punches well above his weight, doesn't he? Big time. He's got really long legs, you know. He's got massive legs and a little tiny body. Oh. He was showing me his box set up. He actually has his box really high. Dangles his legs <laughs> off it. But he did a method feeder demonstration, which were really good. He's been winning loads of matches the last few years fishing the method feeder, and he showed our guests exactly what he does, how to soak the pellets and stuff. They loved Andy's demo. Um, Lee Carey were there as well. Lee was demonstrating fishing to islands on a long pole, so it were another tactic covered. Another fishing, spin, yeah. yeah, long pole, uh, 16 metres, showing them how to hold the pole properly. A lot of people were really impressed with that. Um, match fishing's Joe Karras were there. He did waggler and bomb fishing to islands, so another two methods that are very popular in the match fishing world, and Joe's an expert at them. And finally, Andy May, a pole fishing columnist, he did margin fishing. So I started off by showing people how to fish worms and casters down the edge. And um, then later on, he showed them how to catch some really big carp on ground bait and maggots. It went down an absolute tree. And what's the format of it? The, the guests move from angler to angler? Is it? Yeah, yeah. We got, if you know Bonsai Lake at Lindham, there's a spit that goes out in the middle. So we had the okay. whole of the spit for the day. 
to ourselves and we split the anglers or the guests up into little groups of three and four so it's really nice and personal um, and the anglers picked a peg on the spit there was plenty of room between them four or five pegs walk and they come yeah. to the next angler doing a demonstration four or five more pegs along the next angler will be doing theirs and you spend around an hour with each angler um, who talk you through it let you have a go it's really good you can look at um Literally, the, the, rigs, the, look yeah, great, the guests look at, were in the tackle box looking at the rigs, you know, plenty of banter handed out. It was a great day. Yeah, it's, it's certainly one of those days that's going to give you great memories. And yeah. what other sport could you could you get that close up and personal to you, to the stars with? No, it's unbelievable. It's like, I mean, stood next to Tiger Woods when he's teeing off, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And there's one more coming up, isn't there, in, in May? Yeah, 14th of May at Tunnel Barn. Tickets are still available for that if you go on to okay. um, shop at DHP and it's type in fishing with the stars into the search bar and you can get your tickets on there excellent okay so uh, undoubtedly there'll be a clamor for that and obviously places are going to be limited now yeah um tom heronbrook spring league yeah again uh, back to heronbrook on the sunday this was obviously we made match this qualifier on the saturday, saturday. Uh, this was the final round of this 120 peg league we've talked about it for the last few weeks haven't we um and it's fished really really well again especially considering such a big match was on there on the saturday um, I think the top 15 weights in this match were all over 100 pounds, which when you wow, consider... That's phenomenal. Yeah, when you consider that there's 120 anglers on it, you know, it's, it's great fishing. Um, Dave McManus won it, Ted, Car uh, Ted Carter Southport angler, he had 148.15. Um, he's a great angler, Dave, isn't he? I mean, we've, we've seen him yeah, go on up yeah. there quite a few times. I've certainly seen him win on a couple of occasions when I've been up there. Uh, Mark Lucas was, was second, and Ed Warren... Now there's a name from the past, Mark Lucas. I mean, I remember when Mark was on the fringes of the England team. It was, a, a, and 20 years ago, it was almost seen as a disgrace that he didn't get a full cap. Yeah, I, I yeah. think the thing that's let Mark down is he's such a shy and retiring person. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I've never done anybody we like him. We love you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> So, no, he was, he was second, he had £140.10 and uh, Ed Warren was third with £139.12. Um, so it was, you know, a brilliant um, match. And the leagues actually ended up being really close as well. Uh, Dreadland North West have won it, they had 96 points. Um, Nathan's Tackle was second with 97 points. And wow. Maeve uh, Gold Oak were third with 104 points. Um, that's a big spread of teams as well. I mean, you're talking about a big geographic area that these teams have come from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, must, I must give a mention here. Um, our team, Trentman, we actually won on the day with six points, joint with another team. But you remember I mentioned a couple of weeks ago there was a lad who got disqualified in our team for... Your, your partner. Yeah, for um, going having the wrong amount of fishing his nets so or the wrong split and basically trying to weigh in with one net. Well, if he'd have actually not been disqualified that day, would have ended up second in the league, apparently, so. Oh, no. I felt oh, a bit sorry. Oh, yeah, you, now you're going to really make him feel better now, Tom. Well, well I'm good like that. <laughs> you've, got, you've got to pick these youngsters up, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, no, he's not going to be over cocky, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Capping on to the next team meeting. Please, sir, mister, can I have another draw? Bless him. No, I felt sorry for him, actually. Easy mistake to make, and uh, it was just one of them things. But what a good close league, you know. You know, it was sort of the top, I think the top 10 teams were within sort of 15, 20 points. Which, when you consider the 10-peg sections and it goes over six rounds, it's a good, uh, good close league. Drenna Knockout Cup. Um, obviously, the invites are out for the stars that go straight through to the final. Send your checks in, quickly. Yeah, deadline's um, Thursday. But we yeah. had uh, the second of the qualifiers. We did. It was um, the northern qualifier this time. Again, at Lindholm Lakes. Um, decent attendance, but won by Carl Lovell Cotton with 103 pounds from Bonsai Peg 36. Great performance by Carl. It was really close on the day. Um, Toby Pepper was second off 16 on Laurels with 102 pound, um, literally ounces That's not behind. even a fish, that's a tail. Oh, it's, that's water in the net, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Jason McLean was third with 99.4 from Peg 28 on Willers. And there were another couple, I think there were another 90 pound, loads are 80 pounds. It fished really well, really close. Um, and it all changed like an hour to go. We thought, oh, he'll be qualifying, he'll be qualifying. And at Lindow, in this last hour of the match, all the fish seemed to come in into the margins and loads of people who were only owning up to 20 and 30 pound, all of a sudden caught Started 50 catching. pound in the last hour. Yeah, so it was really interesting, like walking around and watching the match, taking some pictures. Uh, 10 people qualified for um, the Drennan Knockout Cup. First round takes place at Tunnel Barn, so they're all really excited about that, but it was a great match. The qualifiers were Jason McLean, Paul Wheeler, Toby Pepper, uh, Steve Mazza, local angler, 
Danny Ballen, Carl Lovell Cotton, the match winner, J Jonathan Longdon, Steve Reed, Steve Harwood and Paul Wright. And they obviously get the chance to go up against the invited stars yeah. in the very near future. There was a funny story that they tell me about um, one of the carp that was caught. Yeah, very interesting one this, Roger. I, I've had a moan to you a few times about weighing in on commercials. Yeah. I hate it. I hate the fact. I hate it if I walk away from a match and think the weighing hasn't been done properly because you put loads of effort into your fishing. And we're not talking about anything untoward. We're talking about p possibly not being as careful as you can yes. be, not being as accurate as you can be. I just it's like, think... right, that, that's, that's £43. Yeah. Was it? Was it? There's, there's yeah. a lot to think about. There's a lot of, way, a lot of ways off. We are, yeah. we are talking about a lot of fish. In my, you know, five my sympathies ways. are with the scalesmen a lot mm. of the time. Yeah, five, five or six ways sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. This is the thing what people don't think about. As, and I've actually written about this. Might be a bit controversial the next piece I put in match fishing because I've told people, if you're fishing commercials, make sure you have as many weigh-ins as you can because you weigh more water, it's better for the fish. Yeah. And basically, you're not putting yourself at a disadvantage because most seasoned anglers... It's not just commercials. No, I remember a story, well, I was involved in a story many, many years ago, old in at March, I've weighed in. Pete Lee of Oundle weighed in on the next peg and he's beat me by two ounces. And after the match, Ivan said, he's outweighed you. So what do you mean? He said, he had two ways. That's how he's beat you. Yeah. And I, I sat there and I thought, he's right. Mm. My, my roach all went on in one way and his went on in two ways and he won the yeah. match and I came second. Back to but the anyway, this car. Window. Yeah. Um, we went round to do the way myself and Joe Carras weighed in. And on the, remember we talked about Stuart Fotheringham winning the Fishermania qualifier there the other yeah. week and he had a carp of 24 pound nine ounces. Um, well, we got to that same peg um, and the chap on it weighed in and he got a great big carp in his net. And I says to Joe, that's the same fish, isn't it? And Joe says, yeah, it looks like it. And we weighed this fish separate. The fish that weighed £24.9 on the Fishermania qualifier weighed £19 in the Drennan. And we zeroed the scales before we weighed it and everything. Um, been on the Cambridge diet. Yeah. So unless <laughs> it's it's been on the Atkins for a week, <laughs> you know, I, I can't see that. I can't see a fish losing yeah, yeah. over five pounds no, in I that can't. time. No, I can't. You'd have to. It would have to lose a tail. Or something. Yeah. But what I noticed is when they weighed in on the Fishermania, obviously the um, they don't zero the scales after each weigh, which is fair enough between everyone. But I think sometimes they don't always zero the scales in between anglers, and yeah. after 15, 20, 30 yeah. anglers have weighed in and there's slime in the net, water yeah. in the net, scales have been stretched a bit, you know, it must all have an effect. And if you can gain yeah, ounces in between, when you're having yeah. five ways, like the guy on the Fishmania had five ways, you're gaining ounces on each way, it could lead to a pound difference, but you could be gaining pounds. It, well, it is a huge job. And if you look at the, you know, these guys are ultimately fishing for 30 grand and 60 yeah, yeah. grand in the case of, match, case of match this. At Evesham, I think that they weigh in Probably the best way I've ever seen it. You know, 100% agree. Two weigh nets, mm. one set of scales. Now, I'm not saying you can have one set of scales to do a commercial fishery, but two weigh nets, so the scales are zeroed every single peg. Yeah. Um, it's the only way to do it. It's right. I just, I just think it really, really gets to me. If I've spent all week getting my tackle ready to go fishing, yeah. my money to get there, gone and drawn my peg, worked my nuts off, for five hours to catch a load of fish and then I walk away thinking I haven't been weighed in properly. It really, really gets to me. It's one of the things that annoys me in match fishing. I think it's worth saying as well, on this point, you know, the, one of the problems with this and, and where it's easiest um, for it to go unnoticed is with digital scales. Digital scales, you know, you're meant to zero them after every weigh-in, but if you don't, and I think this is what's happened with that carp reading between the lines, they'll have weighed the weigh bucket and the carp. Yeah. So you've yeah. gained five pound that way, you know, because the, yeah. the big weigh buckets and, and they're made of like a hard wearing soft material, got to weigh four or five pound, aren't it? So zero it and that, but wire takers, they have it dead right, each yeah. one have it dead right. Dial scales, so you can see, and you're going to notice then, if you're, if you're coming to weigh in and the needle's round here behind zero, you know that it's not zeroed. Digital scales, there's no way of knowing that. No. Okay, and you caught up with Carl. Yep, got a nice little interview with Carl Lovell Cotton. I'm here with the winner of the Drennan Knockout Cup Northern Qualifier, Carl Lovell Cotton. Well done, sir. You've had a yeah. nice day's fishing, haven't I have, you? Yeah. Talk us through it a little bit. What have you weighed? What peg have you been on? Um, I've had up to three pound and a, a bit of change. I'm on peg 36 bombs eye. And this is the peg? This is the peg. Brilliant. Um, I've had a, a few on Waglet early. Um, I've caught better K 
casting away from my feed than, than actually in amongst the feed. Right. And then I've picked a few off on pole, just roundabouts, just slapping and swap between the two. Um, and then with an hour to go, I've put a full pot of worm and caster in in front of the next platform. And maybe put the eight pound of effort into the next last hour. Brilliant stuff, brilliant. So, Top just all in. One of them rare matches where every time I've done something, it's worked. So, yeah. Brilliant. Quite opposite of last, last time I went out, but there you go. Fantastic, sir. Well, are you confident to uh, going into the first round of the Drennan now? Um, Tunnel Barn Farm? I know where it is, but that's about it. <laughs> so, and under no illusion, there'll be lots of specialists there, so I'll just go and enjoy it, hopefully. And you never know if I draw a corner with a bit of wind or something. Yeah. Might be alright. I'm sure you'll do very well, and best of luck for it, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for that, Matt. Briefly, uh, UK Champs qualifier at Boston. How do you fish that? Yeah. Um, this is a relatively new event as well, and I think it's been running the last running the last sort of three years or so. Um, basically, the top forty in the UK Championship, um, how it finished last year, get invited automatically to fish this year. The bottom forty aren't invited, and they have to qualify. That's basically the, the gist of it. Uh, ben Hag, who's a top angler from the southwest, he actually won the match. Uh, he was on peg one, two, four, and he's caught chucking a method feeder past the eighteenth tee. It's actually the same peg, if you remember, that won our Brendan Knockout Cup qualifier on there couple of weeks ago. Okay. Um, so again, he caught on the feeder. Um, second place was Dean Kenworthy, our mate, from yeah. uh, up Lindome Way. He's come second. He's had, um, I can't remember what weight, I think he had 80 pounds, something like that. 87 pounds. 87 pounds, yeah. yeah. He caught Bream five metres on the pole and sweet corn. He was on peg 114. But the standout weight, in my mind, just from a purely interesting point of view, is Steve Ring has actually gone there and fished Bloodworm and Joker, which I found very He brought the bait back from Hungary, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, he'd, he'd managed to keep the bait from, from last week's... Um, Walterland Masters. Walterland Masters, and uh, kept it alive, took it up there, been tipped off that it would work, and he did. He's had uh, 55 pound of skimmers, I understand. Brilliant day's fishing. So, um, yeah, and the top 40 from that obviously qualify for the UK Champs, which starts on May the 4th, so... Excellent. Okay, well, next week, guys, we'll be covering the Commercial National from Lindo, um, the Guru Festival down at Whiteacres, Fishermania at Makins, Tunnel Barn Farm, maybe match this from Lindo, the Anglo Dutch Classic. But we will leave you with the news that Grant Albert has got himself a new assistant. See you next week. <laughs> what we got here, Grant? Shh, got the baby in the bush there, mate. Come on. <laughs> this is just, oh, hang on, hang on. Yep, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Yes, we, uh, we have you met me, Lou? I've adopted him. <laughs> New ginger little. It's a shame for ginger people. I think everybody should have one. <laughs> and here's mine. <laughs> this, is, this is the new ginger push chair. <laughs>